clerk with the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to ask my clerk to lead us tonight. This is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, first item is approval of the agenda. I make a motion we approve the agenda. Second. Page and second. All in favor? And motion carries. Thank you. This uh, month's school recognition is the Wakeland Elementary School. So let me read our uh, nominees, if you will. This year, it brings us great joy to nominate Wilma, Wilmer Herrera. He is such a pleasure to have in class and really represents Wakeland well. Wilmer logs on every morning with a smile on his face and a positive attitude for learning. That attitude carries all day long and is even infectious to his class. He is helpful, responsible, and respectful to his peers and himself. It's such an honor to recognize him for his positive attributes. He has shown resilience and perseverance as we adapt to our new normal of learning. Congratulations, Wilma. Uh, and the teacher <coughs> says, uh, Wakeland is proud to recognize Rebecca Cohn. Ms. Rebecca Cohn is a special education teacher at Wakeland Elementary. She goes above and beyond daily to meet the needs of her students, and she does it with so much love and compassion. Ms. Cohn is also the leader of the special education department. She ensures that our school is always in compliance with state and federal guidelines. She also mentors and supports other special education teachers in her department. Ms. Cohn is an invaluable asset to our school community. Her professionalism, dedication, and commitment are just a few reasons why she represents the very best of Wakeland Elementary School. Okay, public comment. Did we have any submitted? We did, we had three comments submitted. Okay. This is from Dr. Crowen. Town of Zabulin Board of Commissioners, to my fellow citizens in this meeting, in October of last year, I forwarded to you concerns regarding some of the limitations imposed upon citizens by the previous January 2020 zoning restrictions. I had specifically noted that the new rules cut into the personal expression of the use of personal property. Since that letter, I have met with several members of your assembly and I understand better the intent of the January zoning restrictions. Good people amongst your committee have related thoughts regarding how new development might negatively impact the township, if not carefully managed. This appears a reasonable and responsible cause for action on your part. I have also been advised that the new regulations are changing and being modified as members of this body perceive the need to not impede personal freedoms. To that goal, may I suggest that a provision be added to the new regulatory document to lessen restrictions for older homes, elder residents, and older parts of the township. It would be responsible, it would be reasonable for a person in their 70s to change their lifestyle and manner of living to acclimate to unanticipated health changes, even if these changes conflict with accessory structures limits. It would be wise for the board to consider them that modifications to property that would not permit an elder's building of a pool for cardiovascular treatment or a greenhouse for healthy emotional investment, regardless of zoning codes that might contradict such a project. Sometimes changes in life and health warrant alterations to one's property that a youthful lifestyle did not predict. It is also beneficial for the board to recognize that innovation and community benefit can sometimes come from what might be eccentric behavior. Projects initially deemed odd or different should similarly be tolerated. Over 20 years ago in Cary, North Carolina, I modified two gasoline-driven cars into pure electric vehicles in my backyard. These, passions, these passion projects elevated the possibility of an electric conversion to a substantive fact 
making the possibility seem plausible to previous doubters. The conversion, conversion to EVs also promoted educational inspiration for several youth now designing EVs in major OEMS and provided guidance sleds for major manufacturers to seek out guidance to better engineer vehicles. Though at the time, there were some naysayers who questioned the reasonableness of the project. The town of Cary's willingness to entertain what seems eccentric behavior resulted in a great deal of community benefit, including the EV Expo of 1996, not letting limits of zoning restrictions tie the hands of American innovation and creativity could promote agricultural, te technological, and social benefit for the town of Zebulon that we may not yet see. We never know what one of our community, what one of our community might be a right brother. If they are just permitted to construct a small barn on their property in preparation for their kitty hawk. Preservation of older homes might appear to be a vanity project but when a town demonstrates flexibility in supporting both preservation and renovation of such properties, the result is a visual aesthetic that is unmatched in newer development and a historic draw to the town for projects and tourism that cannot be recovered. Once the historic structures are lost, accommodating such expensive and time-consuming efforts has yielded benefits of encourage, to encourage diversity and vision while preserving history as a living exercise. I hope the board will consider revising the January 2020 zoning regulations to be more flexible in the older parts of town. And for the older members of our community, in our efforts to not let new development, development efforts change us into what we do not want to become, we should be prudent to not alter the best parts of who we are. Dr. Carlin. Okay, this is from Susan Atkinson. The owner of a house in a downtown commercial building in the proposed Zebulon Historic District, I'm asking the commissioners to oppose any resolution which seeks to delay consideration of a historic district by the National Register Advisory Committee. The primary benefit of a historic district to owners of historic homes and commercial buildings in Zebulon is their ability to use tax credits to offset the high cost of renovation of these aging structures. It seems that new subdivisions with hundreds of homes are being approved by the Board of Commissioners with expediency, yet much needed relief to those who own and maintain the aging and historic structures in Zebulon is being unnecessarily delayed. Also, there appears to be a lot of confusion about whether a historic district means that some group can dictate things like what color an owner can paint their home. A historic designation cannot dictate like what color an owner paints their home, or if an owner adds or removes features of their home. Listing of a historic district in the National Register is primarily an honorary designation. Under federal law, owners of private property listed in the National Register are free to maintain, manage, or dispose of the property as they choose. Owners have no obligation to restore or maintain their properties in a historically significant way, but if they do choose to restore their properties in a historically significant way, then both, the federal, both state and federal tax credits may be available. The availability of these tax credits provides an incentive for business and homeowners to make much needed renovations to their properties, which in turn makes the town of Zebulon look more beautiful and attractive to new businesses and residents. I am respectfully asking the commissioners to allow the historic district nomination to move forward for consideration by the National Register Advisory Committee. And those were from Susan Atkinson. And this is the um, last comment from Scott Carpenter. Town commissioners, Preservation Zebulon agrees that historic preservation is important to the character and vibrancy of the Zebulon community and that communication with the public and our elected officials throughout the historic district nomination process is critical to its success. We invite you to, att to attend our information session on the Zebulon Historic District that will be held virtually Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021 from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. with limited in-person attendance at the Zebulon Women's Club 405 West Sycamore Street. This meeting will be held to explain the National Register program 
and to allow questions to be answered. Members of the town board, staff, and the public are encouraged to attend. For more information about the meeting, please visit our website, preservationzebulon.org. And that was from Scott Carpenter. That's All right, it. thank you, mm -hmm. and thank those folks for taking the time to uh, write a letter to us. Okay, next is the consent agenda. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion made, second. All in favor? Raise your hand. Thank you. Old business, Zebulon Historic District. Joe, you're going to lead off on this one? Well, thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Tonight, the Zebulon Board of Commissioners will consider commenting upon the application independently submitted by Preservation Zebulon Incorporated to place more than 320 properties located within the approximately 160 acres bounded by and adjacent to Wakefield Street, Vance Street, Arundel Avenue, and Judd Street onto the National Register of Historic Places. A little bit of background, and uh, I've got some PowerPoints that I'll share, but I'll be reading uh, substantially from the staff report that you all have had, but I'm doing so because probably the viewers at home are um, trying to catch up on this. So as far as background, the National Register of Historic Places is the nation's official list of buildings, structures, objects, sites, and districts worthy of preservation for their significance in American history, architecture, archaeology, and culture. The National Register was established by the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 to encourage historic preservation initiatives by state, local governments, and the private sector. By example, the Wakeland School, where we uh, are in right now, as well as the George and Neva Barbie House were individually listed on the National Register in 1976 and 2007, respectively. Nominations to the National Register of Historic Places are reviewed by the National Register Advisory Committee, also uh, going by the abbreviation of NRAC, at one of three meetings per year. The NRAC then makes recommendations to the National Park Service on placing districts onto the National Register of Historic Places. Preservation Zebulon Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit organization registered with the North Carolina Secretary of State, was established by its members to, quote, advocate for the preservation of historic districts, buildings, and landscapes in Zebulon, end quote. Preservation Zebulon Incorporated, independent of input or oversight by the town of Zebulon, has nominated the Zebulon Historic District for inclusion on the National Register of Historic Places. This is the map that is included in that application. Um, I'll show you another map later on in the presentation, but roughly speaking, uh, this is Wakefield Street right here. Down here, this is Vance Street. This is Arendel, and this is Judd. So this is that 160, close to 160 acres that I referenced earlier. So the Zebulon Historic District uh, includes 389 buildings, three sites, 15 structures, and two objects on 300, over 320 properties. The district covers close to 160 acres and is, and I'm quoting from the application, quote, roughly bounded by North Arundel and East Gannon Avenues, North Gill, East Horton, West Judd, East and West Sycamore, West Vance, North Wakefield and North Whitley Streets, Rotary Drive and the former Raleigh and Pamlico Sound Railroad tracks, end quote. The district is largely residential but includes some commercial resources along the 100 and 200 blocks of North Arundel. So on this map, that's down in this vicinity right here and the 100 blocks of West Vance Street, West Horton Street, and East Horton Street. So there is uh, the West uh, Vance portion, and there's the Horton portions. Uh, the district reflects construction spanning the time period from 1906 all the way to 1971. The town of Zebulon, citing the limited ability of residents within this district and interested citizens elsewhere to fully participate in a public meeting amidst COVID-19 related restrictions, requested Preservation Zebulon Incorporate, Incorporated withhold submitting the nomination until NRAC's June meeting. So 
NRAC meets in February, June, and October. Um, the mayor specifically offered to come to a Preservations Evelyn Incorporated meeting to more fully explain the reasoning behind this request. Preservations Evelyn Incorporated is moving their application forward and the nomination is scheduled to go before the NRAC's February 11th, 2021 meeting. As seen in this next slide, Preservation Zebulon Incorporated independently notified all property owners within the district and placed a legal advertisement of a meeting they are hosting. Uh, while this meeting, while this notification and the meeting may comply to the letter of the nominating process, and so let me just do a little schoolhouse rock on you here. The Preservation Act that was passed in 1966 this is called enabling legislation, and oftentimes what enabling le legislation does is it gives power to a particular agency, in this case, the Department of the Interior, to set up rules, and they set up rules for nomination of the uh, um, historic districts, and that's in the Code of Federal Regulations. The federal government, in turn, applies what are gonna be the responsibilities to the state agency, in this case, the State Historic Preservation Act, and they lay out their rules, um, most specifically here as it relates to notifying people as far as the nominating of historic districts. So it is clearly uh, that Preservation Zebulon Incorporated followed the letter of the requirements about notifying um, the, the residents in the community at large by placing this legal ad this one is from the back pages of um, Wake Weekly. Now, while this notification and meeting may comply to the letter of the nominating process, as I just mentioned, it is clearly not a public hearing. So one, uh, in addition to this uh, notice in the paper, Preservation Zebulon sent out letters to property owners and it specifically, specifically referenced this upcoming meeting as a public hearing. Um, and that's clearly not the case, uh, um, as stated in the property owner letter. And the meeting's limited access and participation functions outside the intent to offer property owners the opportunity to object to the nomination. So when I say intent, this is what I'm referring to. Going back to the Preservation Act of 1966, so enabling legislation, they talk about things like goals. And when the Preservation Act is read, it very much has the intent that all parties are on board. In fact, it uses language about cooperation with local government. It also talks about getting input and feedback from people by allowing them to have access to public spaces like libraries, courthouses, things that are generally identified more readily with public um, spaces of gathering, public forums. Um, the Federal Code of Regulations also goes on to say that the state is the one to notify the property owners. Now, I, I'm not an expert on this, so I'm not going to get into the business of, of whether the state can allow a group like Preservation Zebulon Incorporated, but when I look at the Code of Federal Regulations, it says it's the state's responsibility. Okay, more importantly, as it relates to you, the Board of Commissioners. Preservation Zebulon Incorporated meeting does not meet the requirements or the intent of North Carolina's open meeting law. You all can only meet as a group and discuss town business when it's advertised and at an appropriate time and is made open and available to the public. Therefore, the Zebulon Board of Commissioners, as the only public body with legislative and policy making authority for Zebulon, is precluded from participating as a as a board as a board at Preservation Zebulon Incorporated uh, meeting, thereby denying the board an opportunity to understand and comment upon the Zebulon Historic District's nomination to the National Register of Historic Places. Therefore, if the Zebulon Board of Commissioners, as both property as both owners of property within the district and elected representatives of the district's residents and interested citizens throughout Zebulon. They wish to provide a comment to the NRAC regarding the nomination of the Zebulon Historic District. They must do so at the regularly scheduled meeting, which is tonight, which is the only one in advance of when the NRAC is supposed to, or scheduled to meet, which is on February 11th. 
So the discussion before the board is whether they want to comment to the National Register Advisory Committee regarding the nomination to place the Zebulon Historic District on the National Register of Historic Places. Now typically, always, when we bring something before you as a staff, we provide both a policy analysis and a fiscal analysis to help you make a decision. We have not participated in the development of the nomination. Copies of the nomination were received by request by our planning director, Mike Clark, on January 12, 2021, and staff has not had sufficient opportunity to offer a policy analysis for the board's consideration. So what I'm about to offer you on both policy analysis and fiscal analysis is just a cursory review. So upon cursory review, <clears throat> the span of construction time frame and style and the span and the expansive area of consideration is well outside the time frame and the area defined as the focus of Zebulon's policies toward creating a vibrant downtown. So when you look at this map right here, this blue is the area defined and labeled as the Zebulon Historic District. This red is what you all as a board had defined as the downtown overlay district. The downtown overlay district has been the focus of your incentive programs, such as the facade grant, the streetscape grant, the building, building upgrade grant that you will uh, take under consideration this coming budget. It's also been the focus of your uh, policy decisions re regarding development ordinances, your unified development ordinance, specifically related to the downtown core, reflects your goal about uh, development within that downtown overlay district and immediately adjacent to that overlay district. This downtown overlay district is also related to your policy decision to join the Main Street program. So you have several uh, financial incentives, you have several development policies that are geared towards this area right in here. And that's why when I say upon cursory review, it seems like this area out here is outside um, your focus area. As such, designating such a large area with a wide array of time frame and styles could possibly dilute and possibly conflict with the goals of the board's adopted policies, the 2030 Zebulon Strategic Plan adopted in 2018, the Unified Development Ordinance adopted in 2019 being two examples. As far as fiscal analysis, again, staff has not had sufficient opportunity to offer you a fiscal analysis for your consideration. But once again, upon cursory review, the federal tax incentive opportunities associated with a National Historic District, and I've provided in here um, some attachments that talk about the process of getting the historic rehabilitation tax credits. It's just not a function that you happen to be in a district and have a contributing structure and you automatically get tax credits. Um, those appear to be exclusive to the owners of the commercial resources located within the much smaller and distinct portion of the district. Um, so as an example, your, one, your facade grant, um, while it wasn't a considerable amount, amount of money, it helped to initiate the rehabilitation of this building. So this building before it was rehabilitated was devaluing in property value. Um, by making improvements to the property, not only did it raise the property value, but it allowed for a tenant, successful tenants, but most notably there on the right, Simply Blush, who is doing a thriving business and is not, is not only increasing your sales tax revenue coming into the town, but is also proving to be a calling card for the town as well. Um, this business, this building would not be eligible in the Zebulon Historic District because for some reason is outside of the boundary, which I think is an interesting thing to evaluate further given that Vance Street is your uh, initial main street and was uh, platted and plotted and aligned to be the primary arterial for Zebulon when it was founded. So furthering on with the analysis of the, the financial proposal, they may reveal that the town's current and proposed incentive programs offer a more flexible and responsive method for owners to invest in their commercial buildings and properties downtown. So here's a couple of examples. This is a recent um, facade grants that were handed out for both Old Raleigh Distillery um, as well as Muter Construction. 
I don't want to speak for Brandon McRaney, but I do know enough about what he had to go through to get permitted for a special activity such as his through building permits. I also know that he had to go through another hurdle of uh, working with the ABC board. I'm not sure that he would have been inclined to pursue uh, regulatory oversight at both the state and the federal level to get a federal tax credit. So you all may have some incentives out there that um, are more flexible than what can be provided by um, the historic preservation tax credits. Although the historic preservation tax credits do have their place, they're just a tool, they're, uh, and tools have uh, specific uses. These two structures, by the way, well, not the one on the upper left, but the old Raleigh Disturley was uh, listed as a non-contributing structure, and the other building that Muter has, which is right at the corner of a rental and Vance, that was also noted as a non-contributing structure, so I don't know that they would have been eligible for the um, tax credits anyway. Um, and then speaking to the uh, residential side, additionally satisfying the prerequisite and the post-review obligations of the rehabilitation work overseen by the federal and state agencies may be too rigorous and restrictive for residential property owners to realistically pursue and receive a tax credit. Taxpayers, uh, and this is coming straight from the State Historic Preservation Office, taxpayers should consult a tax advisor, North Carolina Department of Revenue, or the Internal Revenue Service for help in determining tax and other financial implications. Um, there's not a lot of time. Uh, the NRAC meets February 11th. So if there's a property owner there that would like to um, make a comment to the NRAC when they're considering this application, specifically if they would want to object because silence, uh, the way that I read the um, the rules, silence is uh, taken as concurrence. So if there are property owners out there that are interested and wanting to know more, at least slow it down so they can understand more, this is the address that they need to uh, write their comments to. So that would be addressed to the State Historic Preservation Office, Attention National Register Coordinator, 4617 Mail, Cent Mail Service Center, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27601. They do require that the statements are notarized. I'll just make it as a general statement to the public. Um, both the deputy clerk and the town clerk are notaries, so if anyone would like to come into town hall, they're welcome to do that. Town hall's open, we're a safe facility. Everyone uh, wears masks and we're behind shields, so feel free to, uh, to come in and utilize our notary services if that's necessary. So, as with all staff reports, uh, we arrive at a staff recommend recommendation. Staff does recommend the board request the National Register Advisory Committee table the nomination at least until their meeting schedule for June 10th, 2021 to allow one or to allow three things. First, a more formal and robust discussion among the district's residents and Zebulon's interested citizens to weigh and consider their concurrence or objection to the creation of the Zebulon Historic District as currently proposed through an unrestricted public meeting convened by the Zebulon Board of Commissioners at the Zebulon Town Hall. And two, a thorough evaluation by town staff on whether the Zebulon Historic District as currently proposed supports or detracts from the town's policy objectives and fiscal responsibilities. And three, a thorough evaluation by the Wake County Historic Preservation Commission as traditionally performed for other towns who are members of this interlocal agreement with Wake County. Let me elaborate on that a little bit. Um, Zebulon joined the Wake County Historic Preservation Commission through interlocal, ag agreement, interlocal agreement a few years back. The reason being is because they are the subject matter experts. While your staff can give you policy guidance and fiscal guidance, these are the, uh, the, the staff and the appointed officials who have expertise in historic preservation. And that's the service they traditionally provide for any town who is a member of their organization through interlocal agreement. So with that, if the board concurs with this recommendation, they may adopt the resolution, not adopt the resolution, or modify the resolution that's attached. And with that, that ends my presentation, and I stand available for any questions. Questions? If the historic designation occurs, is that going to alter or change how our facade grants are able to be uh, considered and distributed to 
applicants? I don't know that. So you would need more time to understand that? We would. Okay. And what exactly is going to occur on the town's part uh, during the four months that they are requesting uh, between the January or February 11th meeting and their next meeting, what will the town be doing you know, as far as research to get an understanding? Uh, <clears throat> as a specific example to answer the question you just raised, how would this impact our policy objectives through the programs adopted? like the one you just mentioned. Will this negatively or positively impact the facade grant program? So we'll be doing policy analysis and fiscal analysis to bring back to you. Um, what we would also ask is that this nomination packet be sent to the Wake County Historic Preservation Commission for them to review it. And then when time allows, when COVID restrictions allow, to convene a public meeting where people are able to hear um, more information about historic preservation the policy analysis, the fiscal analysis, the feedback from Wake County Historic Preservation, and actually engage in a debate about that. Do you feel that you've delayed Preservation Zebulon's um, the middle of their applications in any way? We don't. I can, I can read specifically from an email where, well, I'm gonna do that. This is an excerpt from an email that I sent to Preservation Zebulon in June of 2019. They had, they had asked for some input on a letter that they had written. I'm not going to read all my response, but I'm going to read the part that gets to your question. I think a more productive path and one that leads to a higher probability of success is for Preservation Zebulon to complete the first draft of the nomination packet, bring that draft to the board, and allow them the time and space needed to discuss the details of the National Register Historic District before moving forward for public comment. They'll at least be prepared for the many questions and comments set to come their way. They may even see enough merit in the proposal to partner with you in the public feedback component of the nomination. I remain open to help guide you through this process, um, and I'll gladly schedule t uh, some time for us to meet in person when I return. So that is a small example of going back since at least to 2018, where we have repeatedly reached out, trying to, to um, coordinate and collaborate with them. And now we're at a point where, um, yes, they have spent a, an awful lot of time. And so I think there's a delay, but I don't think it's fair to say that we caused that delay. It sounds like you are actually trying to help them with a more productive avenue. I think so. Okay. I don't have any more questions, but I do have a comment. But I'll wait till anyone else has questions. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Your comment. In the document that is titled Preservation Zebulon and the Zebulon Historic District, there is not a page number on it. There is a statement that says, our project to yield a Zebulon Historic District nomination has taken several years and could have not been completed without your continued support in our efforts to date. We have, among several bulleted items, one of them is met with each of the Town of Zebulon Board of Commissioners, the Town Manager, and Town Staff to keep them in the loop of our plans and its progress. That does not apply to me. That has not happened with me. Right. So I just want to make that clear that they might have been referring to the past board, but as far as keeping me in the loop of their plans and its progress, I was given a brief overview by Scott and Mary Beth Carpenter, and that is all I have received to date. It, what they might be referring to, and it's conjecture, but they did come and speak in the three-minute sessions uh, several times. Now, whether this board was city, seated at that time or the old board, I really don't know. Do you recall, Beverly? Yeah. yeah, but that may be what part of what they're referring to. I don't think it accomplishes what you're <coughs> thinking should be accomplished, but in all fairness. I just wanted to make yeah, 
I get it. Everyone aware but that in that document, it makes a statement that I don't necessarily feel is, is accurate. Other comments or questions, concerns? Would you like me to read the resolution and see if you want to adopt it? Okay, bear with me. And it needs to be read because we have <laughs> people that watch. Bear with me. This is this font is really small. So. <laughs> Uh, resolution 202106 requesting that the National Register Advisory Council table the nomination of the Zebulon Historic District, whereas the town of Zebulon recognizes the importance of placing buildings, structures, objects, and districts on the National Register of Historic Places for their significance in American history, architecture, archaeology, and culture. And whereas the town of Zebulon has supported efforts to place buildings such as Wakeland School on the National Register of Historic Places, whereas the town of Zebulon has also supported the efforts of Preservation Zebulon Inc. in their efforts to conduct historic walking tours and events such as Scanathon Memory Project through grant awards and the use of town facilities, and whereas the town of Zebulon recognizes pre-qualified rehabilitation of buildings listed in the National Register of Historic Places, either individually or as a contributing building in a National Register Historic District, may be eligible for tax credits. Excuse me. And whereas the pre-qualified rehabilitation of income-producing commercial buildings located in the 100 and 200 blocks of North Rendell Avenue and the 100 block of West Vance West Horton and East Horton Streets may benefit from tax credits and also help the town advance upon the 2030 Zebulon Strategic Plan's vibrant downtown goals of a clean, attractive, and historic downtown with a variety of special events, entertainment, shops, restaurants, businesses, and housing to serve as the heart of Zebulon, providing a gathering place for the community and a destination for visitors and whereas the town of Zebulon recognizes the best public policy decisions, especially policies affecting over 320 properties and nearly 160 acres, as in the case with placing the Zebulon Historic District into the National Register of Historic Places, are made when interest of all are considered. And whereas Zebulon Town Hall is recognized by tradition and practice as the public forum for Zebulon citizens to publicly exchange ideas on whether they concur or object to public policy, and whereas public gatherings and participation have been limited in size and function by COVID-19 related restrictions and extraordinarily so given to the heighted, heighted levels of risk and limited access to technology for the residents within the proposed Zebulon Historic District, and whereas the mayor, in light of these conditions, requested Preservation Zebulon Inc. withhold their nomination until such time as Zebulon Town Hall could be more fully functioning uh, for all citizens, but most notably the residents within the proposed Zebulon Historic District as the public forum to publicly exchange ideas and opinions on the Zebulon Historic District. And now, therefore, we, the Board of Commissioners of the Town of Zebulon, North Carolina, do request the National Register Advisory Council table the nomination of the Zebulon Historic District at a minimum until their meeting on June 10th, 2021, to allow time and space to conduct the following items. A more formal and robust discussion among the district's residents and Zebulon's interested citizens to weigh and consider their concurrence or objections to the creation of the Zebulon Historic District as currently proposed through an unrestricted public meeting convened by the Zebulon Board of Commissioners of, of, at the Zebulon Town Hall and through evaluation town, by town staff on whether Zebulon Historic District supports or detracts from the town's policy objectives and physical responsibilities and through evaluation a, a thorough evaluation by the Wake County Historic Preservation Commission as traditionally performed for other towns who are members of the interlocal agreement with Wake County. Believing the National Register Advisory Council cannot make an informed decision absent the information gathered from the conduct of these items. So, 
Anybody have any thoughts on that? Sounds good. Pardon? Sounds good. Okay. Well, what's your pleasure? I make a motion we adopt resolution 2021-06. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Other comments or discussion? I'm assuming this will be sent to the uh, State Historic Preservation Office. Yeah, I'm going to um, draft a cover letter to go over it. And uh, I've, I've actually got a rough draft, but I'm, I'm telling you it's rough right now. <laughs> so, but uh, we have, you know, we still have some time. It would, it would be going out this week. Uh, so, yes. Other questions or concerns? All right. All in favor, please raise your hand. And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, board comments. Uh, Glenn, start with you tonight. Um, I just want to uh, congratulate a couple of uh, Parks Recreation staff members for completing their uh, certification. I think uh, I was Sheila Long and yeah, Jeff Harden. Oh, um, Josh Harden. Josh Harden. Josh Harden for, for their completion of their um, recreation certification. Okay, thank you. Jen? Um, I would like to say that I'm excited at the prospect of having a, and a historical district in Zebulon, but I do believe that doing it, the analysis is what is going to get us where we need to be um, and certainly keeping the public informed with a public meeting is the right direction for us and what we need to be uh, doing as we move forward. I would also like to um, say that I'm pretty excited with the amount of folks in Zebulon who have been proactively taking things upon themselves to better our community. There has been a um, coordinated trash pickup effort that I really, really appreciate. It's um, what a nice thing to be doing for our town, uh, helping to keep it neat and clean. And I would also like to thank um, Commissioner Moore for helping out with the Food Hub food distribution on Saturday, as well as all the other volunteers who came together to make that event happen. Thank you. Beverly? And I'm, I'm glad of our historical, the, the resolution, I think so many people that are in that area, there are what, 302 homes, that some of the, they're older residents, and I just think they need to know exactly what's going on. So I think this will be very helpful. Okay. Annie? I don't have anything. Larry? Um, two quick comments. First of all, I'd like to thank the town staff for your efforts in social media and website enhancements. Every time I go to the Zebulon website, which I do frequently, there is something new and better. For example, today I looked at the violations, little mapping menu, which was really cool. Kudos to the planning department. And second of all, a little bit of a concern for those of you still watching COVID-19, I'll remind you of a couple bad statistics in that 25% of the deaths in North Carolina occurred last month in North Carolina. And if you're following this in the news, uh, some people are talking about us going to a hurricane cat five on COVID-19 because of the variants that are much more contagious. And if a variant is more contagious, more people are gonna get sick, which means hospitals can overflow and we can even have more deaths. So remind all the citizens of Zebulon to practice the three uh, safety concerns, wear your mask, social distance, and wash your hands and use sanitizer because we're not out of the woods on this yet. I'm crossing my fingers we are, but let's stay posted and do, be smart. Thank you. Okay, uh, I just will say, normally I don't make my comments, but 
uh, you know, we're not trying to kill this district. I mean, I want that perfectly understood. That's not the idea. The idea is to be sure that everyone has an opportunity to be informed and we want time to evaluate, um, but we are supporters of a historic district. It's just that uh, we think it needs a little more time and work. So having said that, uh, Joe, manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. I've got actually uh, four items here. Uh, Bobby reminded me of some budget transfers that uh, we'll need to bring before you. First of all, a preview of the joint public hearing for next Monday, there'll be one item. There is a, uh, in your unified development ordinance, there's a conflict about what type of signs are allowed downtown. Um, this will be for a monument sign, which is also known as a ground sign. Um, this uh, provision or this text amendment will allow that flexibility for those buildings that are currently down there that have the setback from the street. So that will be an item that will come before joint public hearing of the Board of Commissioners and the Planning Board. Um, because you all have scheduled a retreat for February 18th and 19th, I'm gonna request that you uh, cancel that meeting. So we'll need a motion to cancel. I'll tell you the two big reasons uh, behind the cancellation. One, as Mr. Uh, Commissioner Laux just said, uh, the, the COVID uh, restrictions, um, we have to be very careful about how we adhere to those. And so how we've done retreats in the past about uh, size and bringing um, presentations and consultants before you, we're not going to be able to do that like we've done in the past. So that's one reason we're asking that you um, cancel retreat for when it was scheduled in February. The other reason is um, we intend to use the retreat when you do have it to kick off the next uh, set of tasks in the 2030 strategic plan. So when the 2030 strategic plan was adopted in 2018, there was tasks associated with each of the focus areas. And we're pretty well coming to the conclusion of, if we're not wrapping up, we're well underway. And so we need to develop a new set of uh, tasks on that. And we need to hear from the board on what they want to see as um, the tasks that they get rolled into the next round of this strategic plan. So we need to spend some time with you all, and we're doing that work right now and setting up some interviews for you. So we need some time for that. Uh, before I um, proceed to the next two, let me pause and see if um, there's a motion to support the canceling of retreat. Yeah, what we need is a motion to amend the meeting schedules for 2021, deleting the retreat dates of February 18th and 19th. Okay. I'd like to uh, move that we cancel the retreat scheduled for February 18th and 19th with a possible rescheduling at a later date. Second. Motion made, second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you very much, Joe. All right, let me recognize Chief Perry for a very special recognition. Good evening. Uh, as I look around our elected officials, uh, we're very fortunate to have a, a, a group that that leads us, that has a lot of different experiences in emergency services realm. Um, I've had probably conversations with each one of you in different respects about either life experiences you've had in some cases or experiences through uh, relationships um, that have just that add to your knowledge of emergency services and we're very appreciative of that. I could, I could probably go around the room and, and name out each one of the different things that you've done, but uh, uh, in essence of time, I, will, I would like to I recognize just a couple tonight. Um, back in November of last year, we did a structural live burn training. Um, we try to do at least two of these a year. Um, sometimes we get lucky and we do more, but uh, it all just depends on availability of the structures and that kind of thing. And, um, Commissioner Clark and Commissioner Baxter uh, came and probably the worst part of the whole event and the worst part of the whole um, session was sitting through training. Um, not always the funnest part of, of, of firefighting operations, but they, they, they bared with us and, and went through uh, some uh, nationally based standards training on firefighters and what firefighters do and what goes into it, um, especially into the breathing apparatus and what it takes to wear that equipment and that kind of thing. So, um, and then the, what we considered the fun part on the first Saturday in November 
uh, they came out and participated with us uh, as, as we went in that structure and did, and did live fires training. So uh, in recognition and in our appreciation to both of them, um, we have taken the, the helmet shields. Um, they had their eye on these. I'll go ahead and mention it from the, from the beginning. But uh, we took their helmet shields and placed them on a plaque too, so they could remember and commemorate uh, their involvement. We very much thank you. Um, and, and others have done other, it, other events that have gotten uh, experience to kind of see what's, what it looks like on our side, and we're always very appreciative. But I'd like to present these to Commissioner Clark and to Commissioner Baxter. Thank you for that wonderful experience. Thank you very much. It was, it was a great experience. Okay, thank you. All right, Doug. And then finally, uh, your manager has limited uh, authority in when they can move money around, but when I do, we have to make you aware of what we've done. And so I recognize uh, Bobby Fitz to share with you what those budget transfers are. And then uh, when he's done, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Joe. Yes, as Joe alluded to, this is uh, some transfers operating to operating um, line items under 5,000 each. So these, uh, based on the ordinance, are allowable as long as we report them to you at the next scheduled meeting. Uh, just got a few of them so far, kind of mid-year cleanups. Uh, and project and property management department uh, moved $1,405 from travel and training, 1,200 of that to mowing equipment maintenance, $100 of uniforms, and 105 to insurance and bonds. Uh, and operations moved 2,000 from travel and training to vehicle maintenance. And also moved 1,800 from community recycling day to equipment maintenance. And finally, in parks and recreation, moved 5,000 from part-time salaries, community center to grounds maintenance. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. Out of here before 8 o'clock. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. <laughs> We're adjourned. Son. I have